What's going on everybody? Today's video is part two of making your first carbon fiber panel. The process we're gonna do on this one is called vacuum bagging, so let's jump into it. All right, now first thing, I'm gonna put a link below to part one, which is just a wet lay, where we go over cutting carbon, uh, some of the, the tools you'll need like brushes, uh, scissors, stuff like that. Um, also, links to all of these like tools and like where I get my supplies and everything will be in the video description below. So check that out in case you wanna know where I get all this stuff. Now, assuming that you've watched part one, vacuum bagging picks up pretty much right where that left off. Once you lay up your carbon and wet it out, that's where the vacuum bagging stuff takes over. So you're going to need a few more supplies. Gum tape is a must. Gum tape is kind of like a sticky, gummy, like it says, gum tape, which seals around the mold. After that, and you lay up your carbon, peel ply. I have a blue peel ply here. There's different colors, different types of peel ply, depending on what you're going to do. Blue is what you see most common. And then your bleeder or breather cloth, it does kind of both. It allows the vacuum pressure to get over the surface of whatever you're vacuuming down as well as that pressure gives the extra epoxy room to kind of get sucked out of the part, giving you a tighter consolidation of your carbon and a stronger and lighter part. And then your vacuum bag. And then off camera, you're gonna need some uh, vacuum hose. I got a chunk right here, which is just a, whatever, three quarter, or I'm sorry, three eighths inch hose. I stuff a little bit of net or something in the end so that way when it gets vacuumed down the bag doesn't just seal off the end of the hose and our vacuum pump which is permanently mounted to the wall up there so um, yeah so let's jump into it like I said I'm assuming you watched part one where we cut the materials and mixed our epoxy and stuff like that so we're just gonna jump in right to the laying up part alright so once you get all your materials cut you want to make sure you gum tape everything because once you mix that epoxy, everything needs to be ready to go. So if we mix up our epoxy, but then wasted the time putting the gum tape on like I am now, that epoxy could set up before we get a chance to get vacuum on it. Now the other thing I want to mention is these non-stick scissors. I'll put a link to these below as well. These are really nice for cutting gum tape because they're not serrated and you can see how they say titanium non-stick. They have a coating on them that keeps the gum tape from sticking to them which is really nice. Alright so I touched on epoxy real quick in the other video. I use a company called US Composites. I like their stuff. I've been using them for years. For this part we're going to use a 3 to 1 ratio which is their medium speed. Um, it's a little bit warm in the shop today. Plus, I'm going to be filming, so it might take a little more time, and this will give me a little bit more time. But whatever epoxy you use, the company will have a data sheet telling you your mix, mix ratios and cure times and all that stuff. A quick little tip for figuring out how much epoxy you need. If you take the carbon fiber you need to lay up and weigh it, it's about 318 grams. A good ratio I've found for doing vacuum bagging is about 70-75%. So let's say 320 times 0.75 equals. So I need about 240 grams total. Now that doesn't mean that's the ratio of the finished part because some of this epoxy will get pulled through the part into the bleeder. Um, but that's a good starting point. You can always just mix up more and kind of finish out the, the layup as well if you ever under mix it. Now since we need 240 total and this is a 3 to 1 so we'll divide by 1.33 about 180 grams of epoxy. A tiny bit over so 184 times 1.33 Three, three is about a three to one uh, or a third. So 244. All right, so we're ready to go. We're gonna mix it up and start our layup. All right, so I used the medium speed on purpose because recording is gonna 
slow me up a tiny bit, but I still got to move quick. All right, so we're mixed. All right, so right now I'm checking the surface for any strands of carbon that could be hanging or, you know, stuck to the face. This will be my visual layer. Make sure nothing's on the mold either. And you also want to square up your carbon because the carbon loose could kind of just be out of square. So just make sure it looks pretty good so you got a good weave pattern. Now on something like this, what I'm going to do is just dump the epoxy on. And use our squeegee just to spread it out. You can see the carbon shifted on me a tiny bit. So you want to, once it gets wet out and the epoxy gets down to the surface, it'll kind of stick much better for you. The other option you could do is kind of fold back half of it. I did this on the wet lay video because it was a much smaller, skinnier piece. As the, as the carbon gets larger, it's a little bit harder to do that without messing up the weave. So hence why I'm doing it this way on this one. But that's just one of those details that as you kind of start doing it, you'll find out you know, what you like or what kind of works a little bit easier for you. Alright, so the epoxy is over the whole surface, and as I'm doing this last scrape coat, I'm putting some pretty good pressure down. Just in case there's any air bubbles, it'll kind of just, you know, squeegee out the air bubbles, kind of like putting a decal or like a big sticker on something. That's something probably a lot of people have done, and you get that air bubble, and you kind of got to work that air bubble out to the side. So this should get rid of all the air and give us a pretty good surface finish. All right, so I scraped it pretty good. We got a little bit of leftover epoxy. I'm just gonna leave this surface a little bit oversaturated because the next layer will suck up any extra epoxy. Now even though it's a back layer, you do want to try and make the weave square or fairly square to the front. And just like the first layer, I'm just going to dump it on and squeegee it out. Alright guys, so there we go. We're squeegeed out. We used pretty much all the epoxy we mixed, so our ratio is pretty good. At this point, our consumables go on, which first is peel ply, as the name implies. It peels off once the part is finished. Oops, did I cut this funny? What the heck did I do? Now the peel ply, as you can see, is cut slightly larger than our carbon. Put it on smooth because if the, if the peel ply has any folds or wrinkles or anything, the back side of your part will have like a little vein of epoxy running through it. And then bleeder, as the name implies on this, it allows the extra epoxy to bleed into it. And you'll see that as soon as we put the vacuum on it. And then, and then a little tiny extra piece of bleeder never hurts where our vacuum line is going to come in. That way epoxy won't backtrack into the vacuum line. Vacuum bagging, it's not very common, um, but you can way oversaturate a part. 
and suck epoxy through the line. And if you have too much, could make it all the way to the pump and ruin your pump. All right, so all of our consumables, our lamp is good. Now time for the vacuum bag. Now when putting the bag on, this mold is not a good example because I have so much flange area beyond my layup. A lot of times I'll see people make molds for whatever they're making and if the part, or I'm sorry, if the laminate, the layup stops here, the flange of the gum tape is here. So that's one of the reasons why a large flange on your mold is a good thing to do. But if you find yourself in a situation where you have a very short flange and your gum tape is almost right along your part, you want to make sure that no strands of carbon or little tiny stray fibers of peel ply or anything get between your gum tape and your vacuum bag. All right, this is where I'm going to do my vacuum line. And I'll do a close up of this in a second. Right now I just gotta get it on before the epoxy sets up. I just remembered saying I would show you a close up of how to do my, my vacuum lines. This is just a piece of MDF cut out into like a little horseshoe with a clamp. Uh, wrap gum tape around this and stick it on and that's about it. You can see how the net stuffed in the end prevents the vacuum bag from like sucking in and closing off your, your port. You could also take a piece of bleeder and kind of stuff it in the end or just lay it over the edge. You just want to make sure that vacuum line doesn't get plugged up. All right, so once your part cures, you're ready to demold it. Demolding is pretty easy. Just rip your consumables off. You will need some sort of release wedge. Um, a razor blade kind of helps too, especially on something like glass. It kind of helps you get under a corner just enough where a plastic wedge might have trouble doing that. All right, so like I was saying, if you can't quite, oh, there we go, we found an edge to get under, uh, but sometimes if you can't find an edge, that's where the razor blade comes in. Get it under the edge and then just, there you go, put your wedge in. All right, so there you go. Can't see if you can see the reflection. Looks pretty good. Surface finish is, again, what you would expect from a vacuum bagged panel where, you know, you're not going to get every little bubble or void out of it. But yeah, all things considered, looks pretty good. This is just a very thin sheet for a little project I have coming up so you can kind of see how flexible something this large is. But once you cut it into small pieces, it's strong enough. So yeah, so there you go. Now you have the steps, tools, and materials needed to make a vacuum bag carbon panel. Depending on what you're making, just build your stack up as thick as you may need. One quick thing to note, since we're doing this video in conjunction with our wet lay video, I weighed this panel versus the one we did with a vacuum bag. So even though this is an extra 120 square inches of surface area, it's the same layup, so same layers of carbon fiber. This one is 406 grams, 
while this one is 457 despite being a smaller part so that's kind of you know really highlights one of the advantages of vacuum bagging over a wet lay all right so there you go if you learned something please give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below as always guys thanks for hanging out and i'll see you in the next one